Hey, so today we're going to look at remote call recording. How do you record an online call for your podcast in the easiest way possible while still having great quality? We're going to look at all the platforms that you might want to consider, what their strengths and weaknesses are. I'll give you a little demo of each one in the background as well so you can see what they look like so that you can choose the right one for you. Let's jump into it. Let's look at call recording for podcasts. So whether you are a co-hosted show or an interview show, if you run that type, then you probably need to record calls online at some point at least. So how do you go about it? Software? Hardware? What's the approach? This video is all about how to do that, how to do your calls in the best way possible, in a simple way, in a good quality way, in a way that is good value for you. Before we jump into it, if you already use a call recording platform, I'd love to hear. Pop something in the comments below. Let me know what platform you've tried, what you thought of it, what the quality was like, whether you recommend it. Okay, let me know in the comments, what have you used for call recording in the past? It's funny starting to look into this nowadays because in the olden days, we used to use Skype all the time. Skype call recording, you'd have little plugins that did it on the side. It was always a bit of a pain, to be honest. But in the last few years, in fact, the last five years or so, plenty of platforms have sprung up around this. So you've probably heard names in this space, call recording platforms that do this and that, some with video, with transcriptions, all this kind of stuff. So that's what we're going to delve into. We're going to break it down, strengths and weaknesses, a little demo of each, and show you what they can do. And what we're aiming for really is a simple approach, but high quality and good value, something that you can just share with your guests. It's not too much work for them. All they have to do is click a link, jump into the room and speak. Before we jump into it, there are a few things that remote call recorders can't do, and that is fix for bad environment, bad gear. So if your guest, your co-host turns up and they're recording with a laptop mic in a bathroom, even the best call recorder in the world is not going to fix that. Fortunately, you don't need to be a master audio engineer to solve for this because you can coach up your guests, your co-hosts to be a bit better at that. We've got some resources down in the description to go and have a look at the links there, as well as some great little USB mics that make sure they've got good gear. But think about that USB mic, think about that recording environment, coach them up to use, you know, soft rooms, you know, with carpets and curtains and chairs around, not a big glass office or a bathroom or a kitchen. But again, more resources down below on how to create a good recording environment and make sure you're giving those tips to your guests ahead of time before you start that call recording. First of all, we've got Squadcast, definitely one of the top three in popularity around for call recorders right now. Squadcast doesn't need any setup for your guests. You just send them a link, they come into the room and they can speak to you directly. It's also full sort of double-ender recording as in it records locally on your guest side and on your side so you get full quality. It records and it uploads progressively as the call continues so that you get that full quality recording from all sides. Now, when it comes down to the detailed features, let's take a quick look. It's Mac and PC, of course, and then you get the same sort of level of files as you normally get from any uh, platform. It can record video, which is great, and there's no guest requirements whatsoever. Uh, you've got split track in there, so it can record out with one host and up to three guests, uh, and you can get five guests for a little bit extra too. Final couple of extra features, transcription. We don't have transcription in here. No editing included in Squadcast either and no podcast hosting either. Uh, cost is a tiered monthly payment subscription. You've got $20, you've got $40, $80. So that's Squadcast's set of features. Hopefully that gives you an idea of whether it's a fit for you. So let's look at another one now. Next, we have Alitu. Now, Alitu was originally designed as an editing tool, but it's since then added in call recording, as well as other features like transcription and podcast hosting too. So let's look at the call recording features and we can maybe discuss the extras a little bit later. So Alitu doesn't include any limits on call recording, so you can use as many hours as you like right in there. 
And on top of that, your recording link never changes. It uses a simple approach where you get one recording studio, one recording link. So you can always put that into your scheduling software, whether that's Calendly or something like that. It's always the same link sent to your guests and they can come and join you anytime. And there's a little lock feature in the room so that, of course, once you've got the right guest in there, no one else can join later on. But you can have multiple guests as well, up to 10 guests inside that room and record them all. Uh, through the Alitu call recording system. Alitu's pricing is very simple. It's one set fee for everything. So that's $38 per month. And that gets you the editing, the recording, the transcriptions, and your podcast hosting built in up to a certain level as well. Similar to Squadcast, it's a browser-based app, so it's Mac and PC. And in terms of the files, you get an MP3, which you can download at the end of the, uh, the process. You can either publish that to your hosting, push it direct to any other hosting platform, or download. And you can download a WAV from the library as well if you want original quality. Now, a couple of differences between Alitu and Squadcast, and a fair few of the others, is that right now, as of now, Alitu records as a call online. So it's not double ender on both ends recording locally. Uh, so it's recording using that call. So it can be subject to the quality of that call. But similar to Zoom, Google Meet and the rest, the quality, as long as your connection's good, the quality is tip top really good as well. But of course I can say because Alitu is produced by the same company as ourselves, we know that Alitu is coming out with local recording later this year as well, within a few months. So you will get that full quality on both ends with Alitu during the summer of 2023. And on a similar note, let's take the video. Alitu does not include video right now. It's podcast focused, audio focused, but that will be added later this year as well, probably during the summer of 2023 too. So it depends when you're watching this video, Alitu might already include local recording and video too. So in terms of those extra features, like I said, transcription is included, editing is included, and podcast hosting is included as well within the one price Alitu package. Next up, let's talk about Riverside, Riverside.fm. One of the more recent additions, but growing fast, doing really well. Riverside is a remote call option that can record up to eight guests, get split tracks, a separate track for every single guest, does that double ender style recording where you get local recording on every guest side and it brings them all together, progressively uploads them all so that you get full quality local recording from every single person involved in the call. A couple of extra features that come with Riverside, you've got running live streams. You can actually do that via Twitter, YouTube or Facebook Live, as well as accepting live call-ins from listeners, which is a nice little feature. And Riverside prides itself on its video approach as well. It's got lots of different formats to show the two people or more on camera and output that video to use as highlights or a full episode to publish elsewhere. So if you are video first, Riverside can be a good option. So in terms of the more specific features, of course, it's Mac and PC. It's a browser-based app, so you can use it anywhere. In terms of cost, they do have a free plan where you can record up to two hours per month with some limitations. So look into that whether they will suit you. But the standard package is $19. And with that, you get up to five hours per month and it gets rid of all those limitations. Then you've got a $29 per month pro plan, which includes 15 hours of recording. And you can save up to 120 a year if you choose to sign up for the annual plan. You can output with Riverside plenty of different file formats. You've got the standards, WAV, MP3, MP4. Video, of course, yes, you do get video. Split track, yes, like I said earlier, you get both audio and video split track. And then you do get transcription with Riverside as well. And editing, you can get some limited editing. So you've got top and tail. So you can actually top and tail the very start and the very end. And they do have some post-processing, as in some audio cleanup and some video layout tools as well. So you can do a little editing around that video to create those highlights. And the final extra we're mentioning here, podcast hosting, not included with Riverside. So you'll need your own podcast hosting solution to publish to after that recording. So that's Riverside and the full set of features offered by Riverside. Hopefully that gives you an idea whether they're a fit for you. Next, we come to Ringer. Now that's spelled R-I-N-G-R. 
missing out the vowels, as you have to. Ringer is one of the more long-established call recording apps, and one of its specialities is mobile phone recording. So it has a smartphone app, which your guests can download, and theoretically make it much easier for a guest to record via a smartphone. But equally, they can also record on their computer, whether that's a Mac or a PC, works in the browser, so you can do that anywhere. Now, cost, it's a tiered monthly payment, as usual. You can save by paying yearly, as always. But they've got a basic plan for $7.99 a month and a premium plan for $18.99 a month as well. So relatively low cost compared to some of the other platforms out there. Now, files, they've got sort of, um, some of the more specialised audio ones available with Ringer, that's MP3, OGG, and FLAC, FLAC. Split track, yes, you do get that. So you've got one host and up to four guests. That's on the premium package. You'll get those split tracks if you want to play around with them all separately. Guest requirements are use Google Chrome or Firefox, or, of course, that Ringer mobile app as well. And video, there's no video in Ringer. Ringer is audio only. One of the reasons the price is uh, maybe a little bit lower with Ringer. You don't get much extra with Ringer. You've got transcription, no editing, no podcast hosting, no. Now, we do have a coupon code if you do want to go with Ringer, if you feel that they are the platform for you. If you use the coupon code PODCRAFT when you sign up for a paid plan, you'll get 10% off monthly or 25% off annually. And it's a thanks to us help support the content that we create. But that's what Ringer has to offer you. Hopefully that gives you an idea if it suits. So that's four of the best platforms. Let's look at another three that I'll mention in brief, give you a quick rundown on. Uh, maybe less stand out, but still really good platforms in their own right for particular uses. So let's just give you a quick little summary of those. First of which is Clean Feed. So Clean Feed is browser based, it's online only, so it doesn't do the double ender side of things, but they claim to have a USP around the fact that they can make calls very, very high quality and not worry about that online local recording on the other end, like on everyone's end, and then bring it all together. So Clean Feed do have a pretty decent free tier as well. So if you want to just do browser based, highest quality possible by Clean Feed's claim, uh, then they could be a good option for you. There are no bells and whistles, it's audio only, no video, but have a look at it, see if it suits your needs. Now, another worth a mention, a uh, much newer platform, more recent to the market, is Iris, iris.fm. And the thing that they're worth mentioning around is the fact that they don't require Chrome as a recommended browser. Many of the other platforms do use a few features that are built into Chrome and not necessarily Firefox or Brave or any of the other browsers out there, particularly Safari. Safari often struggles, but Iris claimed to be able to work with any browser. So if you are a Mac user on Safari or you're particularly fond of a different type of browser outside of pure Chrome, then maybe check out Iris. It might be the one that works best for you. And the final one I'll mention in this tier is, of course, Zoom. <laughs> Everyone's got to know Zoom over the last few years more than anyone ever wanted to, but it's a great little tool. It's great for running calls. It's almost foolproof. Nearly everyone's used it now. So sending somebody a Zoom link generally it caused no confusion whatsoever, and it just works. Uh, you do your call, you download the, the audio, you generally get a video recording along with it. It's just very, very easy. And of course, it's free if your calls are less than 45 minutes. Not very expensive if you go over that too, obviously, with the pro tier, and that takes you into unlimited length recordings. So the downside of Zoom, of course, is that it is susceptible to that call quality, that connection quality. So you do get little dropouts, little glitches every now and again. But honestly, I use Zoom a lot and it actually does the job just fine in many cases. It's not top, top quality, but as a kind of easy, free, um, low barrier, everyone knows how it works. It can work just perfectly fine. Worth noting too that Zoom does come with transcription. So if you are looking for transcriptions, you can get that built in as well. So that was another three platforms in brief. 
show you that was Iris, that was Zoom and that was CleanFeed just to see if any of those might suit you in particular. As always, go down into the description and you'll find links to all of those platforms if you want to go and check them out. And we might well have a couple of coupon codes for you in there if you did decide to sign up for any of the paid plans. Okay. Now you've got all the options, how do you choose? You know, sometimes having loads of options is worse than having no options at all. So let's try and break it down a little bit. First of all, one of the common questions we get is how do I do this for free? How can I do it as cheap as possible for maybe hobbyist podcasters or people just getting started? So if you do want to cut down your options a bit, clean feed do have a very good free tier. Riverside as well, their free tier, depending on the volume you're going to use, could be an option. So maybe check out those two. And then you've also got an alternative double ender type approach, which I'll cover a little later in the video. So we have doing it quite manually, but possibly entirely free as well. If you're looking for multi-track for video as well, you want that kind of fully featured call recording option where you can use it to create little video highlights, entire video episodes, work with all the audio and really cut out any possible glitches, top possible quality, then can't see past Squadcast and Riverside. Squadcast and Riverside give the best options overall right now for pure quality and options. So you pay for them both, obviously, higher quality um, output, but higher tier payments. But of course, that's the kind of trade-off, pay more to get better quality. And do keep in mind, if you're looking at this later in the year, we'll update the description with all of this info. But Alatu is looking to launch that as well later in this year by the summer. Talking of which, I'll mention the last one. Some people come to us looking for call recording solutions and want it really in an all-in-one package. Um, I do believe our best option, if you want it all in one, the simplest possible process is Alitu right now. It's our own app, of course, but that's what it's been built for, to make things nice and simple. So if you want your call recording built in, It'll do the audio cleanup right from there into your library. You can edit in the same platform. There's no downloading files, uploading, merging, all that kind of stuff in a different editing package. It's all just right in there. And then you can obviously get your transcriptions and your publishing done right in the same place too. So if you do just want the easiest possible way, all in one place, Alitu is your option. So I hope that's helped you in your choice. I hope you get a good idea of what you want to go with now, even though there's quite a lot of options out there. Let's look at one other way to get that optimal quality double ender style recording, but without paying for a platform at all. So the way you do it is people actually end up recording their own audio on their own side manually. So there's a few different ways you can do this. One of the simplest is you use something like Zoom or Google Meet or some kind of free call recording, uh, not call recording, call running platform, you know, Zoom or Google, whatever it is. You use that to run the call itself, but you record manually separately. So what you can do to do this is something like, let's say Audacity. Audacity is a free uh, call, it's a free recording, free editing platform out there. It's a bit kind of dated and clunky by now, but it still records audio just fine. So if you download Audacity and then you set that up, you have the input being your main mic, but that main mic also feeds into your call software, Zoom, but equally Audacity is recording your track alone in the background. Now, the key thing here is it's only recording your track. It's not recording the call. So it's recording your mic in your studio locally, top quality. OK, so it's not subject to connection issues, little drop offs, glitches, all that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, you press stop and you've got your voice on one track. You get your other person to do that, too. Whether that's a guest, a co-host, they record their voice on their computer, perhaps using Audacity, and then they've got their track. And then you take those two, they send you the recording, you've got your own recording, and you put them together in your editing package. So any editing package can handle this just fine. You've got multi-track editing, you bring the two together, you synchronise them, you have to line them up. So there's a bit of fiddliness there just to find how they line up. But if you do that, it can work just fine. And with Alitu as well, you can merge two tracks in a similar way as long as you both start at the same point. So that's one way to do it. Equally, you can record using a microphone and a digital recorder. So I've got a roadcaster here sitting in front of me. 
microphone plugged in there, I can record directly in there for my voice. Or it could be like a, a Zoom recorder, it could be a dictaphone of some sort. As long as you can record your own voice locally while also broadcasting into the call itself, that's how you can do a double ender for free. So we always get a lot of questions around this because there's so many platforms, so many approaches, so many different variables that are involved. So I'll do a little FAQ section here. Let's have a look at some of the most common questions we get in around remote recording. So one of the most common people are always asking about mics. Is there a best mic for remote interviews? Definitely not. You just want a good quality USB mic that makes it really simple. Just plug it into your computer and go. Okay, so Samsung Q2U, Rode Podcaster, great USB mics that plug right into your computer and go. And you can have a look at our microphone guide. You'll see a link to that in the description underneath the video here. But equally, any microphone that works with your computer will be perfect. For example, this is a Rode Procaster into the Rode Caster. Uh, mixing board that can go into your computer via USB. There's other digital, uh, you know, interfaces, that kind of stuff, the, the Scarlet, lots of different ways to get a mic input into your computer. But the key part is it really needs to be USB to plug into your computer and easily be, uh, you know, selected as an input for the call. So as long as you know you've got a decent quality mic, then you're all good. Okay, next, should I record in a studio? Well, Remote recording platforms can do a lot to help, but they don't make up for a bad environment. Like I said at the start, if you're recording in a bathroom or a, you know, a metal box, it's going to sound rubbish no matter what. So just try and be in a soft room. Make sure there's carpets around, there's curtains up, that kind of stuff. Make sure it's not hard surfaces, and that makes all the difference. And if you do have to record in a room like that, you might even just, you know, put up a clothes horse with some clothes hanging over it or a, <laughs> the classic, put a duvet over your head and then you're all good. So you do not need to record in a studio by any means, but it is worthwhile thinking about that environment before you start recording to see if you can cut down the reverb in any way. And we do have a few articles on this. Go down to the description, have a look at the links and you'll see a few articles on how to create a good recording area. Okay, what we got next? Should I brief my guest before a remote conversation? So a lot of the people you'll talk to these days are totally fine with getting on a call online. You know, it's become so common in the last few years. So often you don't have to give them coaching, but I still find it's worthwhile to do it anyway, because you'll still have people turn up. They're in a terrible noisy room. They're using the microphone on their laptop, something like that. So what I like to do is put together an email, which I send to guests beforehand. And I just reuse that every single time. So have something around environment, you know, a quiet place, no background noise, soft room if you can. Have someone about the mic, you know, have a decent USB mic, something you can plug in or a headset at least. Try not to use the mic on your computer. So things like that. And we've got a few guides to this as well, as well as downloads actually you can send out to your guests. So again, down to the description and you'll find more information on this. Do I need to pay a fee each month to record my podcast remotely? Well, no, there's free options out there. I mentioned the kind of free manual double ender approach, but equally a few of the platforms we mentioned have free tiers as well. So as long as you can work within those tiers, you might be able to record for free. But the main thing is to remember those free tiers, like I said, are limited in some ways. You have to be able to work within them. If you want full freedom, full quality, then you know, you want to be paying for it as well. If you're taking your podcast seriously, it might be worth investing. Not everyone can. I know that's easy to say, but generally the more you pay, the more you get in terms of quality. But certainly in the early days, if you can get away with a free tier, by all means do. Get into podcasting, learn the ropes and only upgrade once you can join, uh, you know, once you can justify it later on. So yeah, don't feel bad about doing that. Just plan to try and upgrade your setup as you go. Now, are there hardware options for this? You know, hardware versus software for recording calls. Well, funnily enough, there are a few platforms, a few hardware platforms that have come out recently, allow you to record a call directly into the software, into, well, the software on the hardware itself, getting away from the need for these call recording platforms. For example, the Zoom PodTrack P4 has some great little features here where you can bring a caller into that device via your computer. You still use the computer to actually run the call, 
but it can take a call input from your computer as well as your mic too. So you can record your computer and yourself basically into that device to record a call all together into the P4. So that's a great little option too. And of course you've got the Rodecaster just like this, but the Rodecaster Pro 2 can do that really well. So can this one too. And there's new hardware like that coming out all the time. I'd suggest that the online platforms, the web-based platforms are probably simpler and easier to run in many ways. There's a lot of knobs and buttons and settings on devices like this that you need to get to know things that can go wrong. But by all means, later on in your journey, once you're confident with recording calls and all the settings and all that kind of stuff, you can look at those platforms and see if it gives you a kind of upgrade in quality and an upgrade in flexibility as well. The fact that you can do that anywhere then, you can take it to a conference, an event, stuff like that. So could be some good flexibility to be had there. Can I play music and effects during my remote recording? You can. Uh, devices like the Rodecaster here, you can press one of these buttons, play an effect right into your call. So you can do a bit of live production. Most of the time you want to probably do that stuff later to give yourself the flexibility to remove it, to put it in, create it at the right time. If you do it during the call, it's very hard to take out again, obviously. So maybe more in post-production, but if you want to run a live radio show, by all means you can. And final one, what file format is it best to download? my remote interviews. The ideal is uncompressed, high quality. So WAV files are generally the gold standard. They're about the best quality you can get. So if the platform lets you download that, which all of the kind of top ones I mentioned earlier, allow that for separate ones. Um, so if you're working with Squadcast and Riverside, you can download WAVs from them, no worries. With Alitu, you're actually not having to worry about that because in the background, when you record a call into Alitu, it does all the cleanup and the transfer of those files in top quality straight to the editor already inside Alitu, and it only exports to the compressed MP3 format for delivery at the very end for hosting. So if you use any of our top ones, again, Squadcast, Riverside, Alitu, Ringer, then you've got WAVs built right in. So you don't really need to worry about that. It's all there for you. Okay, there we have it. Call recording for podcasters. I hope that gave you a good idea of what platforms are out there that you could use, why you might want to use each one, what their strengths and weaknesses are. So by all means, pop a comment in below. I'd love to hear what you're using and what you think about it. Give us your own little review of whether it's Squadcast, Riverside, Alitu, Clean, Clean Feed, Ringer, any of those platforms. Let us know which ones you're using. I'd love to hear what you think the strengths and weaknesses are for those. And as always, do please go and check out Alitu. Alitu is our own podcast maker app, which we've designed for exactly this call recording, making it really simple and easy. If you go over to alitu.com, A-L-I-T-U, Com. You can try it out for free, give it a shot, see if it suits you and you get a seven day free trial to try it out for that first episode. Thanks again for watching. I've been Colin Gray from thepodcasthost.com. I'll see you on a future video.